Hey everyone, what's up? Geekcom released their new powerful flagship mini PC, the IT15, which in today's tested configuration comes with a very fast laptop-based CPU, the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H and 32GB of DDR5 RAM as well as a 2TB SSD. This definitely is a candidate for a desktop PC replacement if you need or want the really small form factor like in this specific case. Full disclosure, Geekong sent me the IT15 for a review but there was no payment involved and they had no say in my script or the review in general and I was not obliged to make a review. So let's have a detailed view at the specs of the Geekom IT15 first. The Intel Core Ultra 9 285H in here comes with 6 Lion Cove performance cores, 8 Skymont efficiency cores and 2 additional Skymont low power cores for a total of 16 cores but no hyperthreading as Intel isn't doing hyperthreading right now. This CPU features the new Intel Arc 140T integrated GPU which is in general pretty fast but is held back a bit in here due to a lower TDP while gaming. The CPU is paired with two 16GB sticks of DDR5 5600 mega transfer RAM by Crucial for a total of 32GB while it can be upgraded up to 64GB. Geekom is also installing a pretty fast 2TB Crucial P3 Plus M.2 in here with good reading and writing speeds of over 4GB per second and excellent random access speeds. It's also able to maintain its transfer speeds for a long time, so they definitely didn't cheap out on that one. There's also a second M.2 slot available in here, but that only supports smaller 2242 SATA drives. That's the compact form factor up to 2TB. For the Wi-Fi module we're getting a really fast one with Wi-Fi 7 with excellent transfer speeds of up to around 1.7 gigabit. And there's also a modern Bluetooth 5.4 adapter in here. There is a smaller proprietary 120 watt power supply included as well as a visa mount to install the IT15 at the back of a monitor if you'd like that with some screws. And Geekom also includes an HDMI cable and a small quick start guide. And it comes with a clean version of Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. It's super easy to open up the IT15 for an upgrade of the SSD or the RAM. Just loosen the four screws which are hidden in the feet at the bottom and then you can lift it up afterwards and you're inside. Here you can install a second SSD or upgrade the RAM. And even the Wi-Fi module is accessible once you remove the system SSD. The vast ports and connections offer the following standards. At the front we're getting one 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports while one of them comes with S5 power delivery and well the power button. And at the back we are getting another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and a USB 2 Type-A port. Then we have two USB-C 4 ports while one of them lets you use your own USB-C charger to power the IT15. They both support display out over USB-C and you could also attach an external Thunderbolt eGPU with them. Furthermore, we are getting a 2.5 gigabit LAN port and two HDMI 2.0 ports. Oh, and at the left side there is a full-size SD card reader with good transfer speeds. So we are getting a total of six USB ports and we can attach up to four 4K monitors to the Geekom IT15 at the same time. A side note, my 100W USB-C charger by Ugreen was not able to power the IT15 or to be precise, it would boot into Windows and everything, but it would just shut down occasionally, so I think we need at least 120W here to be safe. Also, unfortunately, there is no Oculink port, which is the fast alternative for each GPUs these days. And the IT15 does not have a microphone or speakers of any kind. There is also a second, more budget-oriented version of the IT15 available, which comes with an Intel Core Ultra 5 225H, which only has four performance cores, and it clocks a bit lower than the Core Ultra 9 in here. And that version also only comes with a 1TB SSD pre-installed. Today's tested version is priced at 1,199 euro or dollar, and the Core Ultra 5 version is at 899 euro or dollar. And that's the price before any discount code is applied. Like for example the one they gave me, which gets you a 10% off in total if you're using the links in the description and the comments. 
So in that case, the price would be 1079 for the CoUltra 9 version and 809 for the CoUltra 5 version. Considering its performance, this mini PC is tiny with its 117 by 112 by 49 millimeters. And it only weighs 595 gram, an additional 385 gram for the AC adapter and its cables. The case of the IT15 is made out of a matte black plastic. And as much as I do like the subtle design, it easily attracts fingerprints. And once they are on there, it's a bit harder to get rid of them. Software-wise, Geekcom does not provide a control center of any kind and there wasn't a BIOS update available yet. But if you look at the older IT13 Mini, for example, by Geekcom, they do offer BIOS updates after a while. So that means there is no way to control the fans other than choosing one of the three fan modes, silent, balanced or performance, in the otherwise pretty basic BIOS, which you can enter on starter by hitting the delete key. Now, these fan modes significantly impact the IT15's performance, as they not only determine the fan speeds, but also how much power the CPU is allowed to use for a short burst and in the long run. In performance mode, the CPU is able to pull around 60 watt in the beginning and then throttles to around 45 watt after 90 seconds. In balanced mode, it also starts with around 60 watt, but then throttles to around 33 watt after 40 to 60 seconds. And on silent mode, it starts with 30 watt and then throttles to 20 watt after 40 to 60 seconds. By the way, the idle power consumption of the whole mini PC is really great, no matter which performance mode is activated, with around only 6 to 12 watt if you're not doing anything with it, which would be absolutely impossible for a full regular desktop PC of basically any kind, and especially with such a powerful CPU. But before we are talking about the performance, let's look at the fan loudness in the three performance modes. If we leave the IT15 on idle, it's a pretty silent whisper of around 33 decibel at a distance of 50 centimeter. The fans are always on, but they can get pretty quiet. While I have to point out that even opening a browser or doing light tasks can temporarily cause them to slightly ramp up, even in silent mode. And here I wished we could change or adjust that because I don't think that is really necessary. However, watching a longer 4K video on YouTube only slightly raises the fan noise in silent and balanced mode and a bit more in performance mode. And in longer Cinebench runs, which utilize the CPU by 100%, we see a clear difference between the three modes with a difference of up to 10 decibel. In comparison, 47 decibel is around what a modern gaming laptop sounds like if you play games on the laptop's balanced mode. Once the CPU is throttled to PL2, that's the sustained power limit, the temperatures are fine even under full load in all three scenarios, with around 90 degrees Celsius in performance mode, 78 degrees Celsius in balanced mode, and 62 degrees Celsius in silent mode, at an ambient temperature of around 23 to 24 degrees Celsius right now. But I'm not sure if we could get better results for Cinebench with a stronger cooler, especially in performance mode. Overall, I'd say the cooling system is, well, sufficient, but it could be less loud with a slightly bigger cooler in a probably higher or bigger casing. Now, in Cinebench 2024, I saw a total of 1,023 points for the multicore and very high 128 points for the single core score when using the IT15's performance mode. For the balanced mode, that was 885 points for the multicore and also 128 for the single core score. And in silent mode, the multi-core score drops to significantly to 564 points, while the single core score stays very high with still 124 points. For Cinebench R23 on performance mode, the multi-core score was 19,249 and the single core score a high 2,142 points. The PCMark 10 score is very high for a mobile CPU-based system without a dedicated GPU, with a total of up to 8,130 points on performance mode. I also ran the Pudget system benchmarks for Adobe, which resulted in a high 7,978 for Photoshop, 5,198 for After Effects, and 3,744 for Premiere Pro, where a dedicated GPU would have the biggest impact. But especially Photoshop will work absolutely flawlessly on this little beast, while as you can see here, even 4K video editing is absolutely possible on this machine, which I've tested in one of my recent projects, including color grading and B-roll material. Rendering out one of my recent videos, a 20-minute review in 4K, took 33 minutes and 37 seconds on the IT15, 
while well, it took 9 minutes and 45 seconds on my desktop PC with an RTX 4070 and a Ryzen 7 7700X. In Blender, the benchmark via the CPU wasn't anything special with 248 points, but the ARC 140Ti GPU was able to achieve 704 points, which already is in the ballpark of a GTX 1660 Ti or an RTX 2050. Definitely usable for lighter projects. And now last but not least, let's take a look at the gaming performance of the IT15 in performance mode in some recent titles. While in the 3D Mark Firestrike test, it scored a total of 7,841 points. The first game for today will be Apex Legends, in which I saw an average of 106 FPS with the lowest settings at 1080p and 1% lows of around 62 FPS. It's definitely playable, while it's not quite hitting the 120 FPS mark for a high refresh screen here. But overall, it's a solid experience in my opinion. I was testing Baldur's Gate 3 with medium settings at 1080p and FSR on quality. Here I saw an average FPS of around 27 to 37, depending on the region I was currently in. 1% lows of around 13 to 25, while Act 3 is much more demanding for the hardware. But for that game, it's absolutely playable as fights aren't in real time and I think the game still looks decent with these settings. For Cyberpunk 2077, I was using the medium preset with XCSS on balanced at 1080p which resulted in playable 38 FPS on average and 1% lows of 28. So that's definitely doable while the game starts to look a bit blurry with these settings. As we can see, the APU seems to only use a total of 36 to 38 watt here. So we're most likely seeing a slightly better performance than what we'd get in an MSI Claw 8 AI Plus, for example. With low settings, plus medium textures and FSR set to balanced, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 was a bit sharper at 1080p with much higher average FPS of around 53 and good 1% lows of 40 FPS. Definitely worth playing that way and you could even get 60 FPS on average with lower settings or stronger FSR or use higher graphics if you're okay with capped 30 FPS. I know, I've said it before but I'll say it again, the game is just optimized so good. I was pleasantly surprised by the 150 FPS on average for CS2 at 1080p with the low preset when I tested it in a match against bots on Dust2. And even deactivating FSR still gets us above 120 FPS for that one. Then again, CS2 strongly depends on a fast CPU with good single core speeds, which we definitely have here. Also, the frame time graph was super flat and I didn't get any stutters or freezes whatsoever. And in Forza Horizon 5, I was getting an average of around 67 FPS at 1080p with medium settings and MSAA by 2, while the 1% lows have been fine as well with around 49 FPS. Forza always performed a bit worse on Intel iGPUs compared to AMD, but it's absolutely playable nevertheless on the Geekom IT15, while it definitely looks okay with these settings in my opinion. So, definitely one of the better iGPUs in here, while again, it could be even better if the provided TDP while gaming would be a bit higher. But some casual fun and even AAA gaming at 30 FPS plus is possible for many modern titles. So, well, overall the Geekom IT15 definitely is among the strongest mini PCs currently out there with the powerful Intel Core Ultra 9 285H, the decent iGPU, the fast SSD and 32GB of RAM. I mean, it is really small, but if I could change one thing, it would be a slightly bigger case if that resulted in less fan noise. Other than that, I love how easy it is to upgrade the system. I like the design, while again, an Oculink port would have been cool in case you want to pair it with an eGPU as you lose a lot of performance with a Thunderbolt eGPU. By the way, I have videos on that topic, so make sure to check them out afterwards if you're interested. If you want to get the Geekom IT15 for yourself, make sure to use the link in the description and use my code for a 10% discount. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, consider liking the video or even subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. Thank you. Also, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.